Hey there everyone, welcome back to a brand new episode of the Switch Report. It's Chris, and uh, I know I've been gone for a while, but uh, at the very, very end of the video, I'll get into it a little bit. Yeah, uh, we're just going to get right to the point. Uh, Southeast Game Exchange was this year, which is an awesome convention that just keeps growing more and more every single year. And uh, this is the fourth year that it's been going on. It's at the Greenville Convention Center, or it was at the Greenville Convention Center this year, and it was awesome. Tons of amazing vendor, amazing people, great guests that you could go talk to, really cool cosplays, everything. Everything you could think of was awesome. It was kind of like a, like a mini Dragon Con. Um, and it was, it was awesome, because there's like nothing like that really around here in uh, like the Greenville, South Carolina area. Yeah, I just, I hope it grows more and more every single year. And uh, so far it has, and it's been awesome. But this year I picked up a whole ton of stuff. I always pick up a lot of stuff, but this year I kind of went a little insane as I've been trying to uh, start growing a PS2 collection. You can kind of see a little bit of what I've grown. That's all of what I picked up within the past like five or six weeks uh, since I decided I'm like gonna start collecting. I got some, some pretty good ones there. But it's not about that. We're gonna go through the pickups that I did at the Southeast Game Exchange. And if you guys picked anything up, go ahead and uh, leave a comment, like do like an Imgur photo. Or if you want, if you have a video here on YouTube, go ahead and put like a link to your video down in the comment section. And uh, yeah, I'd, I'd love to look at some of, your, uh, some of the stuff you guys picked up. I'm sure it's like amazing. Cause I picked up some awesome stuff and uh, I was, I was, trying to watch my budget I was kind of going more for like quantity because like I just I want to build my PS2 collection fast with all these like RPGs and weird titles on the PS2 because there's a lot of weird titles and uh, I just I don't have all the money in the world to spend on them but I still spent quite a lot of money I think in total like I spent like $700 but um yeah so we're gonna hop right in and uh, I'm just gonna move through each game kind of say like oh this game looked weird or if I played the game before let's dive right in and uh, first game that I uh, picked up was uh, Devil Kings. I don't know a ton about this game. It looks like it's kind of a Dynasty Warrior style game. Um, it says, pure action, wage war to experience the heat of battle and face off against hordes of enemies. So kind of immediately tells you it's kind of got a like a Koei Dynasty Warriors style to it because it's also from the creators of Resident Evil and Double May Cry. Yeah, it looked neat on the front. It was pretty cheap. I peeled all the stickers off because I'm I hate stickers on my game cases. It bugs me to absolute death. Nine times out of ten, I'll literally just end up changing the entire case, buy like a really crappy game, and uh, get it there. But yeah, boom. That's the first game. Next game is Ghost in the Shell Standalone Complex. I've not played this game and I've never even seen gameplay of it. Um, I enjoyed Ghost in the Shell. It looks pretty cool. It was a little bit of a pricier game. I believe I paid like 20-ish dollars for it. Um, but it looks really cool. All these games that I got too are in pretty much awesome shape. Like, this one hasn't even, like, it's got a rental sticker, but it doesn't look like it has any resurfacing residue. And it looks just awesome. All right, so next game is actually one that I played when I was younger, and I really, really love this game, guys. Uh, it's called Dr. Muto. Uh, I don't know how it's aged because I haven't played it in a long time, but I was obsessed with this game. You play like a mad scientist that has all these different chemicals, and as you like drink the chemicals, you change into different like mutations. That's why it's called Dr. Muto. Really good artwork, and again, I'm going for complete in box too, so I think almost every single one of these, except for maybe two, will be complete in box. Really crisp manual, very well taken care of, and um, again, another one that doesn't seem to have been resurfaced, but is just in awesome shape. Boom! Next game is actually a game that I played on the Wii. I believe it's the same exact game on PS2, but I'm not 100% sure. Um, but I absolutely freaking love this game. Rygar, it was also an NES game that I actually enjoyed that was actually kind of brutal and really made me angry. But yeah, this is Rygar. Um, it's, like I said, it's kind of like a God of War style game, hack and slash. And 
I got my phone on me. Yeah, no, Rygar is kind of a God of War style hack and slash game, and you fight with a shield that has like chainsaw blades on it. Um, it had a really interesting mechanic, which is similar to like a uh, Mario Odyssey, where you'll actually you can throw the shield, and you can actually use it as like an extra platform for uh, for like a short burst of time. Like it'll stay there for a second once you throw it if you hold the button long enough. And uh, yeah, you can use that as like an extra boost to jump. Um, I thought it was really fun. It was really cheap. I paid like five bucks for it. Next game that, uh, don't judge me, but I freaking love this game. And uh, I haven't played it in a while, but I loved this game when I was younger. Neopets, The Darkest Fairy. It's complete. And it's uh, it's actually still got the little sealed card, which I was like, oh, gotta have that just because just of that reason. I never actually had anything to do with Neopets other than this game. And uh, this game is literally looks like it's never been played. I don't think it's been played. It is it is just absolutely immaculate. It's kind of like an action adventure game, probably not aged very well. Um, I'm gonna play these games. Like I plan on playing a lot of PS2 games uh, aside from playing all my Switch games. Uh, but I'm collecting for PS2, Switch, and PS3, so that's pretty much what you're gonna see in this video. Uh, little DS here and there, but yeah, back to it. Uh, Neopets Darkest Fairy, I really enjoyed this game when I was younger. I hope it actually holds up, because uh, I thought this game was like really weirdly in depth for being just like a little tie-in game to, I think Neopets was just like a web browser kind of pet thing, uh, not entirely Sure, I, I'm a little fuzzy on that. All right, and then the next game is, I've never played any of the Digimon games. Not a single one, and I picked up a Digimon World Data Squad. Uh, this was really cheap, it was in really good shape. A lot of the Digimon World games are not super cheap. And uh, there's also ones on PS1, which I have not gone down that rabbit hole yet. But, again, uh, the game is complete. I dropped the manual, but um, yeah disc is in really good shape uh do not even know what the gameplay style for these is like it looks really cool i do like the artwork on the front and uh hopefully i'll get around to playing it soonish all right next game is uh an anime that i freaking loved when i was younger and uh i actually i won't lie sometimes it's kind of like a guilty pleasure to go back and watch it's um inuyasha and this game is the secret of the cursed mask um i actually saw this game yesterday when someone had brought it into the store and i was like that game looks weird i'd seen a fighting game for the ps2 and i was like nah i'm not really a fighting game guy this inuyasha game looked really really cool because uh it's not a fighting game it's like if you look at the back of the box it's kind of like a uh it looks like an action adventure game rpg and uh, yeah, I really think it looks cool. Uh, I'm definitely gonna play this one pretty soon, honestly. All right, next game is Shin Megami Tensei Nocturne. I've played this game. Uh, this game's freaking brutal the further you get into it. But uh, picked it up because it was really cheap. It was like five bucks and it was in super, super good condition. I mean, look at that manual. That thing's gorgeous. And that disc, same deal, looks like freaking like brand new. Next game is Dark Cloud. I, uh, I've played this game a little bit long, long time ago, and I've heard so many amazing things about it, but I've never gotten around to actually fully playing through it. And uh, yeah, it looks really, really cool, and it was in really good shape, so I was like, uh, why not? Uh, it was also fairly cheap. Like I said, I picked up a bunch of games uh, because I'm just trying to bolster that PS2 collection. And now there's no time like a convention because you can haggle and that's a great time to do it. The next game is Valkyrie Profile 2 um, Silmaria. Um, I have played the Valkyrie Profile games uh, only on the PSP though. I've never played a home console version and uh, this game, I loved the one on PSP and this, I mean if it's anything like that, looks awesome. I love the artwork too on the front. I think it looks really, really cool. Um, but yeah, same thing, complete, super clean. Like a lot of the vendors this year, like I've noticed at uh, past years, there have been a couple of people that have like had just games that look like garbage. I'm not gonna lie. Um, it looked like they had just brought crap for like fodder and then a couple of really good things. But um, this year it seemed like there was a lot more there was a lot more easy to purchase stuff. Not There was still plenty of high-end stuff, like more quantity 
instead of just all quality and not as many. But I really, really like that because you can pick up tons of games and the more games you pick up generally you can haggle with the people and uh there was a really really good store that was called game store and more that's what it was called they were like awesome they were doing like 25 percent off and like he worked he worked a great deal with me really really nice guy along with red fox gaming they were also amazing man super nice guys i'd never gotten a chance to meet them but they were set up right next to limited run games who was also making an appearance there and Red Fox Gaming guys, you guys were super awesome, super nice to talk to, and uh, same thing with Game Storm, we're like super nice, love it. Next game is Romance 7, and uh, never played any of these games. Um, I've owned quite a few of them, and have never ever played them. It was like it was four dollars, and it's clean box, complete, looks really good. So yeah, I mean, it looks like. Almost like a uh, feudal era Japan civilization game, but I really I like Civ, but it's generally a game that I have to sit down and invest a good amount of time into. Because once I once I get into it, I'm like, all right, I need to continue doing this, or else I'm gonna drop off. But yeah, looks really cool, clean box, and uh, yeah, just really good artwork on the front. Next game is actually part of a series that uh, I actually have like a really, really, really big soft spot for, Drakengard 2. Um, the spinoff that I'm talking about is Nier, and Nier is actually taking place in the Drakengard universe, and uh, there's a new game that's more popular called Nier Automata, which is also a fantastic game, but man, if you've never played the original Nier that's on PS3 and 360, oh, that game's so good. Like literally one of my favorite soundtracks of all time the music in that game is like it's criminally underrated but yeah back to this uh yeah if you never played these games they, these play very much like um near i've never personally played one but i've seen tons of videos about it they play fairly similar to it um, but Dragon Guard is a really cool hack and slash RPG series, and it's it's gorgeous artwork. Obviously, really nice box. This is one of the ones that I picked up, and it was not complete, unfortunately. But I'll get the box. Uh, or, I mean, I'll get the manual, and uh, it'll be all good. The the disc was in literally like super super pristine shape. Looked like it had pretty much never been played. Um, so I was like, you know what? Even though I'm trying to get a complete box, I'll I'll take the chance. Next game is actually the first Dragon Guard. This one is complete. Uh, I paid about twenty five dollars for this one, but it's really really cool. Um, just because it is the first game, this one was resurfaced. Um, you can see a little bit of residue in the middle, but is what it is. It still looks immaculate, and as long as it plays, that's all that matters. It's it's complete and very crispy manual. And a good looking box. These games have awesome artwork. I have the one on PS3 that also has like, hold on. So I have the one on PS3 and like this game's artwork, that is some good looking artwork on that box. I really, really like that. I actually own like four copies of this game just because I always see it and I love the artwork, even though it's, it's kind of a pricier PS3 game. Back to the actual stuff I picked up. Um, Dragon Guard, really cool, great shape, good pickup. Next game is, Phantom Brave. I actually played this game on the PSP. It's a really cool tactics-based RPG, similar to um, Disgaea or like Final Fantasy Tactics. Really cool, and uh, it's an NIS game, so of course it would be very similar to the Disgaea gameplay as a similar art style or like artwork style too. Next game is actually I've never played this one, but I've played literally every other game in the series, every single one of them, even the ones on PSP. But uh, it's Ape Escape 3. Um, I absolutely love Ape Escape 1 and 2. Clean copy, like look at that. I actually picked this one up from Red Fox, and uh, yeah, it looks absolutely amazing. Like I said, super clean. Love, love these games. I saw that Sony teased a new one a while back, and I really hope that's true because I would love a new one. Next game is a great shooter that's actually by the people that made the new Transformers game. And uh, this is Dark Watch. Awesome, weird first person shooter. But I really, really enjoy it. It's actually, it looks like it's kind of gone up in price over the years, but it used to be like a dollar video game. 
This one's this one's pretty clean. It's not like super immaculate, minuscule scratches. And I'm just like, you know what? Oh well. It's um it's complete, and uh, I hardly ever see this game on the PS2. It's mainly on the original Xbox that I see. All right, next game is Breath of Fire Dragon Quarter. I've read online about this game. I hear it's a very divisive. Some people think it's absolutely horrible looking, like graphically, and uh, some people don't like the gameplay. But I was like, you know what? It's an RPG, and I'm collecting RPGs, so why not? And uh, it wasn't very expensive either. I paid uh, $8 for this one. Next game, I have a huge soft spot for, um, and that is Beyond Good and Evil. This game is amazing. If you haven't played this game, I'm not even going to tell you what it's like. It's literally for everybody. Platformer, hack and slash, RPG, photography. It's got it all. You need to play it if you haven't played it, because if you don't play it, you're a monster. And uh, I don't remember who I picked this up from. It wasn't Game Store and More or Red Fox. It was another vendor, but I uh, honestly don't remember. Who they were. <laughs> Sorry, Castle Shikigami 2. This is like a, uh, it's a shoot 'em up, but it's got RPG mechanics, it's got a full story, and uh, it looks really cool. I've actually never, se I've seen like a very small snippet of gameplay right before I bought it, but it, uh, it looks pretty in interesting, and uh, it's got a, oh, it's got a anime look to it. So uh, next game is Ghost Hunter can't tell you a single thing about this game and the back of the box honestly doesn't tell me a whole ton it looks like it could either be a third person shooter it could be a survival horror game like resident evil or it could be a first person shooter looks interesting and uh it was it was actually like kind of expensive it was like 15 bucks it's not complete but super clean uh disc as long as it plays, I'll, I'll go get the manual later next game is okage this game uh i've I want to say that I've played it before, but it's also like one of those games that uh, I think I always thought of Stretch Panic when I was thinking of this game. It's just one of those games that I'm, I'm kind of split whether I've actually spent a quality amount of time with it or not, but it looks really cool. I got it for $4, and which is actually a really good price for this game. And uh, yeah, it was complete, really clean disc. Really am interested to see if I've actually played this game before. Next game is, come on now, they stuck together. All right, Project Eden. Have no idea what this game is. No clue, but it was $2. Next game is Ring of Red. So this game is actually in the vein of uh, Valkyria Chronicles, and it's actually made by some of the people that worked on that now work on Valkyria Chronicles. Really, really cool looking, and uh, I, I do like the art style that's for it. If you can see the screenshots on the back, those do look pretty awesome. Next game is uh, Onimusha 3. This is the last one that I needed in the series. Uh, I love Onimusha 1. I've never played any of the other Onimusha games. Uh, I plan on doing it very soon. I'm really hoping they bring Onimusha uh, 2 and 3 and I think the other one Dawn of Dreams to uh, Switch because I keep hearing that's a very good possibility. And uh, you know how I feel about my Switch games, baby. Really clean, complete, and it was five bucks. Next game is one that I actually want on the ps3 because they have like um i think it's a remake of it on ps3 that's also got like a sequel as well that's on the same disc um it's siren and uh it's a horror game uh horror games i i buy them but uh most of the time i don't play them because i'm kind of a little bitch the manual super clean the box itself is really clean i actually really really love it whenever you get a game that's like so clean feeling like it's got that like slick new game feel to it next game is unlimited saga really really fun series done by square enix a lot of fun next game is a game i have no idea what it's about but very weird looking it's called falling stars it's by age tech so chances are it's probably not great um does not many of their games are very good it uh it looks interesting it's not a platformer i think i yeah it's a, it's rpg hours of exhilarating rpg gameplay it kind of looks like harvest moon and kind of like a a barbie game i don't know honestly uh you can see that the back of that box it's uh weird looking uh if you see the sweat on my head i'm sorry it's pretty warm in here and i didn't want the fan spinning and putting light in you guys' face or like flicker and everything because it's pretty annoying full metal alchemist 2 was the next game that i picked up and uh it's complete super clean like this game i know no one ever played 
It has the two episodes of the first season, the two episodes of the second season. Uh, yeah, then it's the game and like, ah! That game is super clean. I like that. There's no way someone played that. Sui Coden 4. These games, pure anger RPG, but really good at the same time. It's got kind of a, uh, like a, a little dingy spot from where there was a sticker on the box. Chances are I'll either try to clean the box off or I'll just change it out. Um, I might just change it out because uh, these games are really good and uh, having a beautiful box, it, it very much deserves. But yeah, complete, really great RPG series with a really interesting job system inside of every single one of them. Um, they will take your life though. They are super long. All right, I gotta set, start a second stack because this is getting dangerous. Next game is probably the priciest PS2 game that I bought. It's a uh, Grandia Extreme, but um, I, I hardly ever see the Grandia games. Um, and this one is just incredibly good looking as far as uh, condition. And uh, it also really intrigued me at the fact that even, like I said, it's complete. But what really got me like immediately sold was I was looking at the box. It says featuring voice work by Mark Hamill. What? But yeah, pick that up. That was like $45, I think. It may have been less. Um, I, I actually worked that out on, in, in the same deal that I got from um, a game store and more. So he may have cut me a deal on that one. I, I got like a lot knocked off of the total price, which was really awesome. It went from like $400 to like like 240 it was awesome the next one was a super dirt cheap game that was uh two dollars and it's called giants citizen kabuto i'm guessing it's not very good but uh who knows sometimes really cheap games cheap game does not mean bad game next game is grandia 2 so i played this game on the dreamcast absolutely friggin lutely love this game um i've never played it on ps2 i assume it's fairly similar um, hopefully it's like literally an exact port, maybe with a couple of enhancements, but, uh, I really, really love this game. Yeah. A lot of people don't really like Grandia games, uh, to my knowledge. Um, especially the second one. I've heard like a bunch of people like, oh, that game really sucks. I didn't like the gameplay and the voice acting was hilariously bad. And uh, I'll give them that, uh, uh voice acting is not great in them, but, uh, it's like that, uh, that janky charm to that like really corny voice acting it's grandia it's an rpg i'm literally collecting like every rpg i'm trying to get i'm almost done with every rpg for the ps3 and uh i'm i'm gonna do the ps2 and then i may go to the ps1 that may be a that's a pricey one but maybe all right next one's not a ps2 game this is a psp game called blade dancer never played it never even seen gameplay i paid like uh ten dollars for it and uh, it looks cool. I really dig the artwork, even if the case is a little dingy. Tales of the Abyss. I played this game on the 3DS and it was a lot of fun. I figured I'd pick it up on the PS2 because it's still really good. And uh, of course, it's just going to look better on PS2. You play as the young prince uh, of a castle in this game. It's got a circular scratch in it, which kind of bugs me. I won't lie. Uh, I'll get, I'll definitely get this resurfaced. It's a really, really fun game. If you like any, if you just like classic RPGs, get the tell any of the tell series. Most of them are really fun. They're kind of generic. It depends on the one you get. Tells you the BS of the abyss is kind of straightforward. It's really fun. Um, Tales of uh, Symphonia is considered to be like one of the best ones. I think Vesperia is the best one in the entire series. But yeah, really good game. Uh, definitely check it out. It's not terribly expensive. I paid eight bucks for this one. The next game is Suicoden 3. Uh, again, uh, all these games have kind of separate storylines. They are all incredibly in-depth. Huge job system. Super long. Will take your life. All right. And then I picked up another copy of Rygar because uh, this this one this one has a uh, like a lithograph inside. And I was like, you know what? I'm uh, I'm down with that. Uh, and yeah, I got this from uh, All Games Matter for about five dollars. And I was like, that's that's definitely worth it. All right. Next game is another one that uh, is not complete. But it is a uh, Full Metal Alchemist. Literally just the first one from the one that I just showed you guys. The uh, Full Metal Alchemist 2 and the Crypts and Elixir. This one, I'm definitely getting resurfaced at a... Uh, this one is the most scratched out of all the games I picked up. But I paid $4 for it. So, Alright, next game is actually a brand 
new like sealed PS2 game and I'm actually super excited to try it out. It's called The Adventures of Darwin. Um, I looked up gameplay. I'm gonna open this unfortunately. Um, but it wasn't terribly expensive. It was like, it was a uh, $20 brand new. Um, but it looks like a knockoff Pikmin, but, uh, with like a evolution platformer type deal. And, uh, it looks really cool. I'm really into it. I've never, I've never seen this game. So, uh, I'm really excited to try it out. And next one is Front Mission 4. Never played any of these games. This one's not complete, but the disc is in super, super great shape. And the case, um, I've actually already swapped. It was in a freaking awful case, but I paid like hardly anything for this game. It was like $3. Lupin the third. No. Next game is Rogue Galaxy. If you don't know this game, go buy it on your PS4. It's an awesome, awesome space opera RPG that is really, really good. If you haven't played it, you're an absolute monster. This one's complete. You can play it on PS4, PS2. I believe even PS3 had like a, a digital port as well. Next one is Escape from Monkey Island. Never played this one, but I love Monkey Island games. It's complete. It was two dollars, and uh, I can't. I, I just can't. I can't complain. So these next three games, uh, I'm just going to show you them all at once. They are PS3 games. These are Silent Hill: The HD Collection, Ridge Racer 7, and Din Geki Bunko Fighting Climax. It's like a mismatch fighting game that I've, uh, I've never played and uh, it's the first time I ever saw it, so I, I got it. I picked up a sealed copy of The Legend of Cage 2 on Nintendo DS. It looks like a Strider based kind of 2D game and uh, it looks pretty cool. I don't know if I'll open it. I, uh, I have a flash cart for the DS. Um, just because like if I pick up a game and that's sealed, like I pick up a lot of sealed DS games, I do not want to open it. So I may just, I throw a ROM on there and, and play it that way. All right, another one is a, is a sealed one. I've actually played this game before. I've owned it before, um, but it is a Final Fantasy Fables Chocobo Tales. It's an interesting little game. It's very, very cutesy. Uh, I actually ended up playing the mini games inside of this way more than uh, anything else. Another one is a dirt cheap game called uh, XG Blast. I have no idea what it's about. It kind of reminds me of Geometry Wars from the back. So uh, I love Geometry Wars. All right, the other one is a Japanese game called, this is Labyrinth. It just translates to Labyrinth. And uh, uh, yeah, that's it. <laughs> All right, so the next ones are some Switch games that I picked up. And I picked up uh, From Limited Run. I got Cosmic Star Heroin, brand new. And uh, yeah, really cool game. Uh, it looks really cool. I have not played it. I have it digitally, but this physical collection was super heavy because I guess it's got like a manual and it's got to it's have a couple things in there. It's pretty weighty. But I picked that up. I also picked up Oxen Free from them as well. And uh, then I, uh, I picked up Friday the 13th, the game, Ultimate Slasher Edition. It has like a little a map inside of there. And yeah, I, uh, I actually is really hard to get this game, weirdly enough. Like all the retailers just kept selling out of it or being out of stock. And uh, every time it would come back in, I'm like, all right, I'll get it in like an hour. And then it would be out. Then I picked up uh, Oni Chanbra Z2 Chaos. It comes with a soundtrack, a art book, a uh, behind the bikini art book and a music collection CD and a racy downloadable strawberry and bananas costume. Um, if you never played these games, it's pretty much sexy samurai babes cutting up zombies. They're okay gameplay wise, but they're, I mean, it's all about the waifus in this game. Next game, if you never played it, do yourself a favor, pick it up on any platform because it's awesome on everything, is um, Pac-Man World 2. A, a 3d platformer that i promise you just this one i mean the first one is okay the third one is uh I, i'm not a big fan of it i don't i know i don't like it this one is like it is awesome and uh, i really dig the theme song at the beginning of this game for no apparent reason i just love it but yeah this game is awesome i paid like seven bucks for it and it's funny story a guy literally bought it new and then was like I don't, I don't want this anymore because it won't work on my, uh, my 360. And so, uh, yeah, it's literally never been played. 
So I was like, oh, that's coming with me for $6. These next ones are some uh, some decently sized boxes. And uh, so I'm just gonna kind of move them closer to me for a second. I actually got this for free because um a guy was uh trying to use it for trade and uh, it didn't have the game in it. And his wife was like, I don't want it. Uh, and so uh, I, I, I got this, it doesn't have the game, but uh, it's got a really, really crisp manual for uh, Xenoblade Chronicles X, and I've already got the uh, the collector this collector's edition, but um, I don't think my manual my my art book is in that good a shape. So the next ones I uh, I paid money for. I I paid a decent amount of money to get all these. All right, so I've got Raging Justice, which is a beat 'em up game for the Nintendo Switch by uh, Strictly Limited Games. That's a brand spanking new. Uh, I got the collector's edition of Dust and Elysian Tale. I got Kingdom New Lands collector's edition. I got West of Loathing collector's edition. I also got Thumper collector's edition, which I have been trying to get for freaking ever, like ever. I'm so glad that I finally got it. Next one is not new. I bought it used, but I've never seen it in person and it's really awesome. Uh, it's the limited edition of Owl Boy. And this is a huge box, but I love it. I actually bought this one from Red Fox. Um, the rest of those obviously came from limited run other than Raging Justice. Um, but Owl Boy, this one was pre-owned, but it's complete and it's still got the, the plastic on it. And it is awesome. I love this game. Really good story. Really gorgeous game. I love this box. <laughs> I needed this in my life. Then I bought a PS Vita sponge case because why not? And then I picked the, or from the PlayStation table, I picked up these little knickknacks. It's a PlayStation fidget spinner and a PlayStation stylus pen. So I'm like, oh. They're free goodies. I like free stuff. I'm a cheap man after I spend all my money and I become broke. Then the last things that I picked up out of all this was uh, from Limited Run again. I, uh, I picked up River City Girls enamel pin because that goes on sale next week and I freaking, I can't wait. I'm super excited. There we go. Yeah, that's a good looking enamel pin. And then I also picked up a Shantae enamel pin and a Mighty Switch Force enamel pin. And uh, I really, really love all those games. Those games are great, which is why, well, I haven't played River City Girls, but it looks amazing. And that was a really cool looking pin. So I got it. Um, but yeah, that was it, guys. Uh, I'm going to turn you towards my TV. Uh, ignore the mess right now. I'm still getting everything situated uh, around here from uh, the move. But let me kind of move you right over this direction. Yeah, there we go. Yeah. So that's the PS2 stack. And then obviously the Switch games are down here. But that is what I picked up from Southeast Game Exchange. So yeah, uh, really good turnout, I think, for me anyway. Um, hopefully everyone that went found stuff that they wanted. Uh, if you did, like I said, just let me know down in the comments, like link a video, post a link to a uh, Imgur. Uh, I, I'm not going to remove any of them and oh man, I'm excited to see what people got to hear from you guys. If you went there, if you plan on going next year, uh, yeah, you can follow Southeast game exchange on Facebook. I mean, it continues to update. They have their own website and all that stuff. It is awesome, guys. Tons of great vendors. Tons of great people. I mean, I and I, I can only thank uh, Robin and them from the Video Game Cavern for letting me be able to, even though I had to go open the store, I only spent about probably four, four and a half hours in total um, going through everything at the event um, because I did have to go operate at work. But... It was still awesome, guys. Just, uh, that's what I picked up in the four and a half hours that I went. If I would have went there, I would have went bank. If I stayed the whole time, I would have went bankrupt. I mean, this stuff is awesome, guys. So, um, yeah. 
I really hope you guys enjoyed the video and uh, like I said at the beginning I'm gonna really quickly hit you guys with a little bit of update I've been uh, so I moved uh, I'm about to start school I transitioned from jobs I'm no longer at the video game cavern even though I'm there all the freaking time I still love that place they're 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 my second family and um, they've been awesome during the whole transition period and uh, I can only thank them for uh, working with me on that but uh yeah I've transitioned jobs now and uh, yeah like I said I've moved starting school again it's, there's just been a whole world of stuff that I've been doing. Um, but yeah, it's an awesome experience, guys. I mean, if you haven't been, I highly recommend it. Like I said, it keeps growing every single year. So yeah, I'm gonna play through a couple of these PS2 games. Actually, I'm gonna try to play through all of them, but I'm working on a new series, guys, called Collect Effect. And uh, it's pretty much where I'll play through a game or most of the way through a game. And then I'll give you guys my opinion on it and tell you whether I think it's a collect it or a reject it and it's gonna be a whole lot of fun I'll go pretty deep into it I'll talk about the history behind the developers and what they've made previously all that good stuff but yeah I've been working on a lot of stuff guys um, even though I haven't been posting I plan on changing that and you guys have been awesome S subscriber count still been growing since I've been gone it's amazing so um thanks guys for watching this and Thanks for coming back, and uh, hopefully you stick around, and uh, I love you guys, and I'll talk to you later. Switch Report, out.